Hey everybody, welcome to the Glow Getters podcast or the Leadership Collaborative YouTube channel. Maybe I'll post this on Instagram, I'm not sure yet. But uh, hey, I'm Kayla. If you haven't been here before, if you're brand new, I teach leadership tips and tricks, uh, whether it's mindset and strategy, I think you need both. And so um, I just love sharing what I've learned over the years, what works for me. I'm a manager and I've been through many different leadership levels and I just love to show up and give you guys some good tidbits and help you out. Um, So today I am energized and excited to be here. I haven't recorded or done like a formal video of like me and my face in a little bit. And if you have been following along, it's because you know that work has been very, very draining. There has been a lot of um, busyness going on with that. And so I'm going to talk more about that in today's episode. But here's the thing. I don't feel fully, fully replenished in my, like my cup isn't 100% full and overflowing right now. But I'm getting myself to the point where I'm feeling like, okay, I love podcasting. I love getting on YouTube and showing up on social media because like I love learning and and meeting all of you. So I know that doing this and hopping back in is going to fill me up even more and get me higher. And so I'm like, you know what? Let's go. You know, people want to see real. They don't want to see perfect. And uh, I think for high achievers and leaders, we want, you know, to have things like perfectly in order. And, you know, that's not how it is. I'm just going to start showing up some more now that I have some more time. (laughs) I usually film these videos like after my work day is over, before I get my daughter from daycare or before like we have family time um, or even in the evening or like super early in the morning. And so now I'm feeling like, okay, I'm not so depleted that I have no energy left after work. Like today I'm like, all right, like I'm going to show up. So I wanted to share with you guys a quote. Um, I have this really cute calendar, a quote calendar, and today's was my ideas are worth developing. So think about what that might mean for you. If you have an idea on your heart, something that you've been wanting to do, uh, think about it. And for me, sometimes I get like focused on uh, getting that idea out into the world really quickly. And then maybe I don't execute perfectly or my perfectionism hits me and I never Um, actually execute on that idea. So I'm just going to give you permission to go as slow and intentional as you need. Be planful, be thoughtful, and um, see where it takes you. Don't give up on that dream. All right. So if you haven't connected with me yet, follow me at Kayla Fahey Arndt on Instagram. You can check out my leadership um, free community on Instagram. That's not my personal account. This one is where I share more about using tools that I have, like my leader standard workbook and lots of leadership tips. You can follow me at leave happy method on Instagram. Otherwise, please like and subscribe this you to you this YouTube channel because it helps me get the message out to more people and it helps me um, know that you guys like the content and that I should keep making it and supports my channel. So let's get started. Today's topic is called uh, breaking all the work boundaries. (laughs) So this is a common thing that I've talked about lately with what's been going on at work, but the long and short of it is we went through a major computer system upgrade and things were not working. And so essentially I broke so many work boundaries that I had set up. And I have friends who, um, shout out to my friend Felicia, she said to me, like, I'm so proud of all the boundaries that you have and uh, the way that you work on those. And I'm thinking, gosh, I've been so terrible at them lately. (laughs) But she's right, I've worked really hard to create some boundaries for myself um, so that I can, you know, enjoy my life. And my life isn't just about working and burnout. And I talk a lot about burnout on this channel and on my, in my history of my work life. So, um, when I was going through this big computer change, helping support, uh, an entire health system, service line and staff, um, I felt myself breaking these work boundaries. And here's the thing. I intentionally broke them out of what I thought was necessity. And so when I made this decision, I thought, you got to do it. It's going to be short term. It's going to be transient and it's going to be okay after a while. But I learned a few things as I intentionally broke those boundaries. And I'm going to tell you sort of what I learned and how I'm sort of trying to get back to 
putting those boundaries back in place and why. So I started working really early. Well, first I would say I started working really late. So I would have so many emails in my inbox. I would have so many people reaching out to me. I had high, um, you know, executive leaders asking me for key performance indicators and different metrics. And they would say like, can you have something for tomorrow morning's meeting? And so I would um, stay up late working past 9 p.m. You know, I would work till maybe four, five, five o'clock at night, pick up my daughter from uh, daycare, be with her until she, my husband um, did like the bedtime story routine with her around 7.30 or 8. And then she, I'd give her kisses and, um, you know, uh, say bedtime, which, you know, takes a long time with a three-year-old, right? And then I would stay up past nine, which normally is when I go to bed because I am a night, I'm not a night owl, I'm a morning person, so I need that sleep. And I would stay up and I would work. And some nights I worked till like 11 p.m. or midnight or 1 1 a.m. And if you're getting up at 5 a.m., that's just not sustainable. So I was working late. I also wanted to get certain documents out to my frontline leaders that they were wanting, like workflow things or things that I was hearing from one leader. I'm like, oh, I should share that with the whole group. So trying to make sure that everybody was um, feeling like, they had all the communication. So I started working really late. So I could handle that for a while. I was like, okay, I'm, I can handle that. Um, and, and this is not to mention, you know, I'm actually almost 31 weeks pregnant now. (laughs) So in the middle of this, I was between like 26 and 31 weeks pregnant. And so I'm just like exhausted, right? I'm like so tired. And for a person who is not growing a human, like that would be exhausting anyways. So I'm, I'm also thinking about like my mental and physical health for myself, but also for my baby. Like I didn't want to go into early labor, (laughs) right? Like that would serve nobody, right? So I was working really late. And that boundary that I used to have in place was that, you know, work, I always would encourage people we often know when we start our work days, but we don't necessarily know when we end them. So I would teach, you know, and preach and, you know, practice that, okay, you know, my work day ends at 3.30 or 4. I work an eight-hour day. And that's, people know that. And when I sign off, they know that. And then if they need me in an emergency, they know how to get a hold of me. But they're not going to expect me to be online that late. And so I wor- broke that boundary. The second boundary I broke was working early. So I found like, okay, I'm so tired. I need to go to bed, but now I need to get up early because I also take my daughter to daycare and I need to start my day at seven. Or maybe I have a meeting starting at 7.15 or eight o'clock that I need to be present for, that I need to have data prepared for. And so, okay, I either stay up late and like that's really hard for me because I'm not a night person. Or I get up early, which is much more manageable, go to sleep at a decent time. But now I'm working like 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's like a 12-hour day. And then I'm working late too sometimes and most often. So that became uh, a source of fatigue, (laughs) obviously, right? Like I can get in the groove and start working early, but then guess what happens? All the things that I used to do in my morning routine don't happen. So the things that help me perform well, like getting my exercise in, doing my affirmations, um, reading some personal development, listening to a high energy podcast or an inspirational or motivational track, listening to a book in the morning, just sitting with my coffee or my work, my pre-workout supplement and just like watching the sunrise Like all of those things that help me protect my energy, gone. So I went through a period where like I'm tired, I'm growing from pregnancy, I haven't slept and now I'm working long and I don't even have the things that light me up and fill me up and get me in the right mindset in the morning. Whew, I'm depleted. Like I'm a negative person and mostly I'm not, (laughs) right? Like I'm most, I'm, such a positive, bright spirit, or at least that's what people tell me. And that's what I like to think. But, um, for me anyways, my low probably doesn't look super low to other people, but felt icky to me. Right. And I found myself 
very tired and wanting to cry a lot. <laughs> so there's no no shame in that. It's just like when you're exhausted, you serve nobody. So I was doing the best that I could by getting those metrics out and like reporting what I knew, but I was also feeling like this is so much. This is so much for me, for one person. I was I found myself becoming addicted to things that I had worked really hard to become like unaddicted from, (laughs) um, free from. So checking my email, I would get like urgent emails and you guys know how I feel about emails. I always say they're not urgent. If, if you need me, like, please pick up the phone. Um, email is like a, a, like a letter in my inbox. Like that's not gonna be helpful, but I was getting these messages from people like, oh, a patient safety concern or a question that needs to be answered right now. And so I found myself logging into my email on my phone after hours and just hitting refresh, 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 refresh. And it's like that shot of dopamine when you get a new email and you open it and you're like, okay, handle it, take care of it. And um, that, I found myself like going to use my phone, but then like unconsciously typing in the, the web browser to log into my work email. And it's like, then you know you have a problem. So I became addicted to things that are not healthy for me, like basically waiting for the next bad thing to happen just to make sure that I'm aware of it and that I have it under control. Like I wanted to control things as much as possible because when everything's getting away from you and you feel like there's a lot of to do and you want to help people and you want to serve others, sometimes just feeling like you have control over the situation makes you feel better. Um like in the quick moment, but in the long term leaves you super depleted and uh, just like devoid of any other energy you might have for like fun things or resting. Resting becomes really hard. You just feel like you should be checking something. You should be calling. You should be following up. You should be doing more. And so thinking about this, a few weeks ago, I was like, all right, things are getting better. They're not better, better, but it's better than a few weeks ago. What can I do? What do I need to do now? So I decided to figure out what are the basic things that I feel like I need to be a better human right now to take care of myself. So I'm going to look back on my iPad. I have been keeping a bullet journal for August and I decided... I found this quote and it says, no one else is responsible for your own happiness, right? Like you control the way you react to things, your energy, things like that. And so I decided, okay, I need to get back to working out every day. I need to be hydrating. So I decided I want to drink 90 ounces of water a day. I wanted to get back to doing morning pages or journaling, getting my thoughts out of my head and onto paper. And I wanted to maybe channel some of that energy by finding inspirational quotes off the internet that can help me. Um, I've always been a huge inspirational quote person. And so I have a huge Pinterest board where I save these. And I just thought that might help channel some of that energy and figure out what might be in my brain and what I need for the day. And then I said 10 minutes of audio, um, an audiobook. So like personal development or a podcast, something that maybe doesn't require me to do that sit down physical reading unless I want to, but maybe something I can listen to as I'm like putting on my workout clothes and getting ready or while I'm working out. So I tracked this over a week period and I did awesome with workouts. I decided to do every other day weights and every other day bar. So kind of that like stretching, um, like cardio or just like low impact uh, workouts, but like ballet bar and then the other like weightlifting. And I really wanted to work on my arms and I wanted to work on my legs. Um, And so, because let's be real, this far in pregnancy, like I'm not jumping anymore. (laughs) Like, no, no thanks. I'm good. Um, And I'm tired. So I figured, you know, getting a little like feeling strong makes you feel super empowered and made me feel empowered. So I thought that will help. So I did really well. I did that for seven days straight. I also met my water quota. I have um, this 
work of this bottle I'm showing it on my YouTube channel. It's like a 25, almost like 30 ounce water bottle. So I just fill it up like three times and I'm almost at my 90 ounces. I don't love that it's plastic. So I actually purchased, and I've had this one for years, probably three years now. I just purchased a glass bottle that I'm really excited about, more sustainable, and it has like markings on it for like time of day. So I'm, I'm like, okay, this worked. Like I'm going to get investing on that. And when I feel hydrated, I feel so much better. It's like a plant. We all need our water, right? <laughs> and uh, maybe TMI, but it keeps you regular, right? If your stomach doesn't feel good or you're full all the time on top of being pregnant, you guys know like it's not, it's not fun. The 10 minute journaling. Interesting. I only was successful at doing this like one time in that week that I tracked it, but I all, I did every day do the one inspirational quote and I shared it on Instagram in a, my stories. And then I kind of like thought about that quote throughout the day. So I was sort of doing this in an indirect way, although I didn't freehand right out. So, um, but interestingly enough, last night I woke up just feeling like I can't sleep um, because baby was moving and I journaled and I felt 100% better and fell asleep right away. So I think that just proves that that's a really helpful thing to do. But baby steps, right? Like I don't have to be perfect right away. I was able to four out of the one, two, three, six, I guess I tracked six days Um I, four out of six days, I did listen to an audio or inspirational track. I've been listening to the book Grit by Angela Duckworth. Um, I was listening to the Keisha, Keisha Fitzgerald's podcast, Empower Her podcast, um, both really, really good inspirational tracks. And then Kim and Jamie Fitzpatrick have their unfiltered podcast, which is, there's an episode just titled Kim. And I swear to God, I was like, that is my life right now. Like, She's going through what I'm going through, and it's just the idea, like, okay, I need a mindset shift, and I need to, like, just commit and do the things and take care of myself. So those are that's sort of how I tiptoed into getting back to me. And as I started doing those things, I was like, all right, I'm gaining my morning back. Like, I'm taking that back. All right, if I sleep... I get up in the morning and do my workout. Okay, I need to take my evenings back. I need to stop checking my email so much. And I haven't been perfect with that, but I've been maybe checking but not responding and during that week. And so I started to feel a little bit more like me. And then my parents came this weekend and helped me uh, hang in. They hung out with Kate while we were there. My mom cleaned my refrigerator. It was amazing. Um, just like little things like that. I did some uh, laundry for the newborn baby and I put that in the nursery and that made me feel excited. So I was like, all right, I am human and I my job is to at work is to guide and set direction and strategy and help people stay the course. It's a very large ship to steer. And I do think I'm the right person for that. And I love doing that. And this is the hardest time, hands down, for anybody that I talk to in the organization, even people who've worked here for 40 years. This is like the hardest time. And I can't personally do it all. I'm a human. <laughs> I'm one individual, one individual who has many things and needs to remain, you know, in a good space, in a good headspace. So one of the things I also did with my team in terms of leadership is I said, okay, let me pull you all together. And we did a two-day retreat and we just sort of brain and word vomited on some really amazing um, uh, big like sticky notes. Let me get them for you guys. Maybe I'll post these on my social media. But we... I'm showing you one of them. We had mountains, boulders, and pebbles. And we talked about, like, in terms of, sorry, that's noisy. In terms of, like, how hard it is for our frontline staff or the things that are impeding you from accomplishing your work, what things are mountains, what things are boulders, and what are just little pebbles in your shoes? And then we thought about, like, okay, how are we going to solve these problems? What can we do about it? 
And who do we need to loop in to help us? Because like I was feeling like I had all of these mountains, boulders, and pebbles in my mind because I'm hearing them from different people, my different leaders. And so now I'm feeling like responsible for like solving all of these problems when I realize I can't. So let me leverage all of the minds. And so the last couple of weeks since that retreat, I feel so much better because like those things are on paper now and they have folks assigned to take care of each piece. And so no, no longer is it me who has to like come up with these workflows because I'm not the best person. I'm not working directly in the front line, um, but it's others and I can just facilitate and, and eliminate barriers and do my work as a manager. So yeah, I'm just so much more happy now and I have been sleeping better. I've been doing my morning routine. I'm feeling stronger. I'm eating better. I'm seeing more hydrated and I'm starting to think about some more like fun things I can do for me. Um, as well as like my baby is due in nine and a half weeks. Like I need to slow down a little bit in terms of my like mind and maybe my body a little bit, respect that more and, um, prepare and, uh, like let, uh, let things come easily and find flow and ease. So I just wanted to share with you, you know, yes, I've been working on these boundaries and people, uh, think that I'm like rock solid in them, but I intentionally broke all the boundaries with work in the last month and a half and uh, some more intentional than others. And oof, yes, it's transient, but at some point it becomes very addicting and it's very easy to continue on that cycle. So I'm so grateful for the work that I've done as a leader prior to this, where I can recognize like, this isn't a normal course. (laughs) You cannot be on this hamster wheel for this long. So my call to action for you is if you're feeling like you're on that hamster wheel, that you're addicted to some of these maybe not so positive behaviors, like being logged in all the time, take take a step back and a breather and say, well, what if What if I didn't check my email every hour, refresh every night? What if I came into a new email in the morning? Would that change how I handle it? Start to ask these questions. When can I carve out more time to look up those key indicators or support the front line? Or is it that I need to say, no, I can't have that for you tomorrow, but I can have it by the next day, right? Being more clear and intentional in your communication and what's humanly, physically possible. Because let me just tell you all, I know that you're all such well-intentioned leaders and high achievers, right? And we will put others before we put ourselves because we're here in, in service, And if you can't serve yourself, you can't serve others. So if you don't take care of you, which we all know this, eventually that service to others will not be as great. So when I get in that mindset where I'm just tired and I can't make the right decisions, that doesn't serve others and it doesn't serve me either. So ask for help. Say no. Say yes, but ask for more time. Take back the things that you are always drawn to and pulled to that give you more energy and light and take a step back from some of those things that are energy draining and limit yourself. So if you can think of some boundaries that you might be crossing or that you uh, don't have anymore, or maybe you want to create these new boundaries, I would love to hear about them. Send me a DM on Instagram at Kayla Fahey Arndt or at Leave Happy Method, um, where I share more about leadership tips, topics, my leader standard workbook, And everything is in the description of the video below so that, or the podcast notes, um, so that you can actually um, check it out if you, if you don't remember the links, it's all there for you to click on. And I would love to hear like, what are you working through and how can I help support you? And let's have a real conversation about how leadership ebbs and flows, the good and bad, the hard, the ugly, the real, the, the awesome, the heartbreak, the the blessings, all of the good things. And uh, let's let's have a conversation about it and let's be real, especially as millennials who are uh, always striving for more and really like change. And yet, you know, what if we were just content in what we were doing and how we were doing and showing up every single day? 
All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Take care and remember to be a light. I will talk to you with another episode very soon. Bye.